That's Obama's talking about a new blueprint for the economy, as if he uh, hasn't been president for three years. He's talking about fairness. We need to have fairness. And by that, what he means is conformity, uniformity, equality of outcomes. By that, he means he needs to have more power, more of your liberty, more of your property, more of your money in order to make things fair. It's this word equality, too, that people use in a utopian fashion to destroy the individual, because it's the individual, you, who are the target. And I'm going through all this so you're prepared for tomorrow, as you would be anyway, but so we can prepare ourselves in a different way. So you'll say, wait a minute. He's attacking the... When he talks about the middle class, when he talks about groups of people, when he talks about words like fairness and equality, all these things, what he means is... What he means is destroying your individual sovereignty. You are the subject. He is the ruler. He wishes to reshape you and mold you. He's attacking man's nature. Men, women, who wish to be independent and free. And so in Ameritopia I explain further. Equality is also disguised as or confused with popular sovereignty. That is... The conflation of the people's will with egalitarian campaigns such as social justice, environmental justice, immigrants' rights, workers' rights, etc. In essence, then, true democracy, it is argued, cannot be achieved unless society is reorganized around the disparate and endless demands of disparate and endless claimants. In due course, such a society becomes chaotic and balkanized. As it dissolves and crises build, the stage is set for escalating coercion or repression. Utopianism's authority also knows no definable limits. How could it? If they exist, what are they? You see, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot have utopianism, which requires centralized, concentrated power in the hands of a few and their army of bureaucrats, and constitutionalism. Because the Constitution compels the opposite. And this notion of radical egalitarianism, spreading the wealth, equality of results, or the perfectibility of mankind is an ongoing process of individual and societal transformation that has to cast off the limits of history and tradition and experience for that which is said to be novel and necessary and progressive and inevitable. A new blueprint. Obama's got a blueprint. That's what he's talking about. Blueprint, which happens to be a word I use several times in Ameritopia. So rule by masterminds in Obama's world is both necessary and necessarily primitive. For it excludes so much that is known to man and about man. The mastermind, like Obama, is driven by his own boundless conceit and delusional aspirations, which he self-identifies as a noble calling. He alone is uniquely qualified to carry out this mission. He is in his own mind a savior of mankind, if only man will bend to his will. Isn't it amazing, ladies and gentlemen, that 300 and some million of us are too stupid to decide which light bulb to purchase, and yet, out of this society comes forth Barack Obama, who's smarter than all the rest of us combined. Now, The mastermind is served by an enthusiastic intelligentsia, or experts, professionally engaged in developing and spreading utopian fantasies. Harvard professor, political theoretician Harvey Mansfield explained that modern intellectuals have monumental impatience with human complexity and imperfection. They believe that politics is a temporary necessity under the rational solution, once the rational solution is put in place. Of course, the rational solutions are not rational at all. While intellectuals are obviously smart, they are not smart enough to have conquered the social sciences and use them to rejigger society. They are posers to knowledge they do not and cannot possess. Meanwhile, intellectuals are immune from the impracticability and consequences of their blueprints, for they rarely present themselves for public office. Instead, they seek to influence those who do. Well, there's that word, blueprint. 
Now, apart from brute force, the mastermind, the Obamas and so forth, the mastermind has in his arsenal a weapon that provides him with predominant advantage. The law. The law. Now, centralizing and consolidating authority is required to replace dispersed decision-making with a command and control structure, the purpose of which is to coerce behavior in pursuit of a fantasy, a dogmatic cause, or whatever we call it today, the New Deal, the Great Society, Obamacare, you name it. And the mastermind relies on uniform standards born of insufficient knowledge and information, which are crafted from his own prejudices and predilections, his own experiences and idiosyncrasies, his own desires and fantasies. The impossibility of these standards may in the short term benefit some or perhaps many, but over time the misery and corrosiveness from their full effects spread throughout the society. Although his incompetence and vision plague the society, this is key. Responsibility must be diverted elsewhere to those assigned to carry them out or to the people's lack of sacrifice. You see, folks, utopianism can never be surrendered. It can never be said to have failed because then the masterminds who are in charge of our country, then they will have to admit failure and that they shall never do. One more thing on this Obama State of the Union speech as reported by the Washington Compost, David Nakamura. Obama will use his State of the Union address, he writes, on Tuesday to deliver an election year message focused on economic fairness for the middle class and what he calls a return to American values. Now, the man wants to fundamentally transform America, so how, how does he even know what American values are? And he's going to return us to American values? May I ask you something, folks? Do you have values? Yes. Do you get them from government? No. Do you get them from politicians? No. Do you get them from this politician? No. And he's going to return us to American values? Exactly what does that mean? Fairness. Fairness. In a video that I just played some some of this video to you, distributed to campaign supporters Saturday morning, Obama said his speech before Congress should be viewed as his blueprint for an American economy that's built to last. Now, we played that audio. A slogan designed to evoke blue-collar imagery and draw contrast with his Republican rivals. Next thing you know, maybe we'll get some of those nice big murals. Uncle Joe Stalin, they used to have these nice big murals painted everywhere where men were working hard. and Saw these big horses pulling. Oh, wait a minute, that wasn't Stalin, that was FDR. Those big horses pulling plows and so forth. Oh, yes, Stalin, FDR, whatever. But you get the point. He wants imagery for you blue-collar workers. Imagery. Just imagine what it would be if we re-elect Obama. Gee. Not more of the same. No, the Republicans blocked him. No, they stood in his way. They're obstructing him, the do-nothing Republicans in Congress. He's got really big ideas now. Not this piecemeal stuff. Ambitious ideas. Bold ideas. He's got another blueprint. Just for us to bring American values back. And imagine this. Blue collar workers. He's going to look out for you. Not if you work in coal mines. Sorry. Not if you work on oil, in oil fields or on rigs. Sorry. Not if you work on assembly lines. Sorry. Not if you build pipelines, not if you're a trucker, not if this, not if that, but hey, who's counting? He wants to create an image. That is exactly what the masterminds do. They want to create an image. They want to talk about bold things, big visions, way out in the future. Imagery. We just need more time. We just need more departments. We just need more bureaucrats. You have to sacrifice. That way it can all be nice and fair and equal. 